Hello, everyone. Uh, I want to begin by thanking Governor Perry, uh, Senators Nichols and Patrick, and many of my fellow co-authors from the Texas House for supporting what I believe is one of the most important measures the Texas Legislature has pending before it this session. House Concurrent Resolution 50 is about the state of Texas, plain and simple that Texas is well equipped to address Texas issues and has proven throughout its distinguished history that we succeed in tough times when others fall short. This distinction of true Texas success is possible by the foresight of our national founding fathers who ensured that the state of Texas would have vast authority to handle issues important to Texans. This intent to grant this authority was shown by the adoption of the 10th Amendment to the United States Constitution. The Tenth Amendment is very simple. The powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states respectively or the people. This HCR 50 effort began over a year ago after visiting with State Representative Charles Key from Oklahoma on the frustrations involved with Washington. It was obvious to me that many Americans are frustrated with Washington and desperately want their states to address this frustration. If there is any message to take from this legislative session, I would hope that it would be this. Texans standing together for our great state will not stand idle for the continued expansion and overreaching of the federal government into very important policy and budgetary issues that clearly should be left for Texas to resolve. And we're not alone in this effort. When we filed HCR 50 just a few short weeks ago, only a handful of states were engaged. Today, there are over 30 states in the process of ratifying or considering a similar measure, reemphasizing the Federal Congress, our well-established 10th Amendment, right. And I wish the problem was limited to unfunded federal mandates, but it's clear to me that many Texans feel more remote and disenfranchised from government at every level because the federal government has become more expansive and more captive to special interests than ever before. If the Texas legislature does not take a stand, if we did not take every possible opportunity to advocate on behalf of 23 million Texans in order to protect each of their constitutional rights for a clear and unambiguous right under the 10th Amendment, to preserve the principle that government should remain closest to the people, then we would fall short of what Texans expect. You see, the premise behind the 10th Amendment is that government is best when it's closest to the people. And everyday citizens have a much greater opportunity to express their opinions to their mayor or their state representative or state senator than they rarely ever could to the highest offices in Washington. We collectively are asking and demanding for Texans to be free to do what we do best, and let's compare what we do best. In Texas, we balance our budget, each budget cycle, for the ninth largest economy in the world. We created almost 50% of the new jobs for the entire country from October 07 to October 08, and over the last six years, we've created a million jobs. In this most difficult of global economic times, we came into this legislative session with a multi-billion dollar state budget surplus. I would say that alone indicates Texas does it better than Washington. Yet for years, the federal government has been asking Texas to adopt a playbook that clearly doesn't work. Every single individual elected official here today has immense pride and reverence for the United States of America because, after all, we are all Americans. And we enjoy the greatest form of national government that exists. We stand together to ask Congress to honor and abide by these principles embodied in our U.S. Constitution no more and no less. Respecting the Tenth Amendment is the first step towards ensuring the genius of the Constitution itself, as this cherished document continues to guide our great nation. So today I ask that all Texans stand with us, reminding Washington that the Tenth Amendment allows Texas to decide what's best for Texas, 
and I would ask to let us all support passage of HCR 50. So at, at this time, I'd like to introduce uh, Senator Robert Nichols, who is the author in the Texas Senate of this same resolution. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, we live in a sophisticated world, and every once in a while, it's important to back up and review core principles. That is exactly what our founding fathers did when they established the Constitution. They wanted to come back in the Bill of Rights and establish certain 10 basic core principles, some of which are freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom of worship, the right to bear arms. And number 10 specifically states that those authorities they are not granted in the Constitution, they will not and shall not grant or impose onto the states. Um, it is time for Texas to send a message back to Washington not to impose your will on us when you are never granted that authority in the first place. So I'm proud to be the Senate sponsor uh, of uh, the resolution uh, that we can carry that message back. I want to thank Brandon Creighton for it, bringing it up in the House and I want to especially thank Governor Perry for his support of this position and all the other men and women who are authors, co-authors, you're standing up to send that message. Thank you very much.